Most kids learn in elementary school that the Pacific Rim, or the Ring of Fire, is marked by volcanic activity and is prone to earthquakes. But would you believe that the deadliest volcanic eruption in the 20th century did not occur along the Ring of Fire? The populations that live on the volatile shores of the Indian Ocean didn't witness that catastrophe either. The deadliest volcanic eruption in the 1900s actually occurred in the Caribbean Sea. There's a great deal of plate action underneath the seemingly benign warm waters of the Caribbean. You might recall that in 2010 and again in August 2021, Haiti was struck by major earthquakes that killed over 100,000 people and affected the lives of more than a million other folks. While the Haitian earthquakes deserve attention, today on the vantage point, we're focusing our attention on the deadliest volcanic eruption of the 20th century. I hope you'll join me. At the outset, let me say that Mount Pele on the island of Martinique is still an active volcano. It lies about five miles inland from the northern coastal city of St. Pierre. As period photos show, the 4,000 foot mountain was clearly visible from the decks of boats anchored in the harbor. The island of Martinique and its active volcano are part of the Lesser Antilles volcanic arc. The arc is a product of volcanism that was produced by the forces associated with the subduction zone where the South American plate is forced under the Caribbean plate. There are 19 active volcanoes scattered along the Lesser Antilles arc. Like most of its neighboring volcanoes, Mount Pele is a cone-shaped stratovolcano composed of hardened ash and layers of solidified lava. Stratovolcanoes are much more volatile than the shield volcanoes in places like Hawaii. In 1902, most people assumed that the mountain was inactive, but hardy hikers that ventured to the crater often reported that they caught the whiff of putrid gases. In 1902, the island of Martinique, which sits astride a subduction zone where the Atlantic Ocean mixes with the Caribbean Sea, was rocked by a series of volcanic explosions and eruptions that killed all but two, maybe three residents of the city of St. Pierre. Although Port de France was the capital city of the French possession, St. Pierre was the cultural center of the island. Ships routinely hauled away tons of sugar and rum from St. Pierre's bustling little harbor. The city boasted a population of about 28,000 people, so the death toll was catastrophic, to say the least. On April 23, 1902, phreatic eruptions started on Mount Pele. You might recall that phreatic eruptions are caused by superheated water that expands underground in underground spaces, but when the pressure is too great, blowouts or eruptions can occur. The steamy 1902 eruptions were preludes to more explosive and deadly events. Minor and major eruptions lasted until September 1905, but the main and most deadly eruption occurred on May 8, 1902. While many city residents had fled the island after the first phreatic eruptions, sundry rural residents who assumed that the city would be safer formed something of a rural exodus into St. Pierre. Even the governor and his wife sought refuge in the city. Because of the movement of people into and out of St. Pierre, the exact loss of life is not known, but estimates range from 28,000 to 30,000 people. As Julie Rosen pointed out in a 2015 piece for Earth, the science behind the headlines, and I quote, the volcano had creaked and grunted back in 1792 and had showered the northern lobe of Martinique with fine ash once in 1851. But after a few more coughs and some minor mudslides, Pele fell quiet for half a century, end of quote. In April 1902, the ground on which St. Pierre sits was subjected to minor tremors and sometimes the smell of sulfur wafted down the mountain and into the city and its hinterland. These were not the only precursors to the big one, however. A lake appeared in the caldera and an underground telegraph cable that connected Martinique to nearby Dominica ruptured. On the night of May 2, 1902, the city was alarmed by a minor eruption that lit up the sky. No one could ignore the looming catastrophe after that night, that's for sure. Witnesses claimed that the mountain looked like it was on fire. 
The next day, residents found a number of dead and dying birds lying on the ground. They were covered in ash. And a ship's captain reported seeing a number of dead fish floating on the sea. In a May 3rd letter to her sister, Clara Prentice, the wife of the American Council stationed in St. Pierre, claimed that everyone was afraid and every eye was directed toward the extinct volcano. Within a matter of a couple of hours or days, residents had a perspective transformation. Their extinct volcano, according to Mrs. Prentice, might just blow the island apart. On May 5th, things took a turn for the worse. A massive lahar broke through the crater and followed the Riviere Blanche, or the White River, down the mountainside at speeds in excess of 60 miles per hour. That's 100 kilometers per hour. The destructive mixture of steamy mud and boiling water destroyed a sugar processing facility and killed nearly two dozen people. The debris crashed into the sea and caused a three meter in size tsunami to inundate low-lying areas in and around St. Pierre. Beginning on the 5th and continuing into the 8th, the rumbling mountain forced hordes of insects, snakes, and other wildlife to flee the volatile highlands. Among the wildlife that invaded St. Pierre were giant centipedes and two meter long pit vipers. It's believed that the snakes and other venomous creatures killed hundreds of livestock and about 50 people. In a futile attempt to save the lives of the terrified residents of St. Pierre and the refugees, military personnel went through the streets and shot scores of snakes and other dangerous critters. On May 6th, blue flames appeared above the mountain. This signified the arrival of magma as a lava dome formed above the rim of the crater. On the nearby island of St. Vincent, a volcano erupted, killing 1,500 people. The worst was still to come. There's no consensus on the events that unfolded on May 8th. But what is known is that in a matter of a few minutes, a gaseous cloud with scorching temperatures shrouded the city. Later analysis of burnt wood showed that the temperature ranged from around 300 to 400 degrees Celsius. To put that into an American perspective, the temperatures ranged from 550 to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Those temperatures almost matched those found on the sunny side of the planet Mercury. The explosion leveled nearly all the city. The only walls left standing were those that ran parallel to the blast. Ships in the harbor smoldered and sank as the city continued to burn for days. When the fires died down, rescuers ventured into the city. They found only one survivor. In a classic example of how crime could pay, which is perhaps a foreshadow of America in the 21st century, the lone survivor in the city proper was Louis Auguste Cyprus. They found him locked up in an underground cell its poorly ventilated air system kept the town drunk from meeting his fate. Cyprus became something of a celebrity, and later he toured with the Barnum and Bailey Circus. The two other survivors were found on the periphery or the outskirts of the city. More eruptions occurred on Mount Pele over the next three years, but none of them matched the magnitude and destructive power of the May 8, 1902 event. While the geological lessons learned from the Mount Paley event are valuable, they cost over 30,000 lives. It's hard to say that I hope you enjoyed this video, so I will simply say that I hope you got something meaningful out of it. If you haven't already, I invite you to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time here on The Vantage Point.